Who are you that do not know your history? I've always loved that quote, spoken by Ulysses near the end of Fallout New Vegas. Though there is something to be said in how the Lonesome Road DLC railroads the player character in the wider context of New Vegas, it bookends the thematic complexity beautifully. Failing to learn from the past, the banal evil of old world imperialism, or, in the case of dead money, learning to let go. Because themes are not, in fact, for 8th grade book reports, but the heart and soul of storytelling, as a work that says nothing, ultimately means just that. Nothing. But before we proceed, let's address the Brahmin in the room. I do not hate Bethesda. While obviously I've made no secret of how critical I've been of many of their creative and business decisions, both the studio and publishing wing have been wildly successful. The simple fact is, Fallout or the Elder Scrolls have succeeded in spite of their role-playing origins, not because of them. Like I mentioned in that Starfield video last year, Bethesda makes adventure sims with incentive for exploration as the central, and really only, design pillar. And if you love playing that, that's fine. My opinion, whether that's good or bad, doesn't matter in the context of tens of millions of sales. It's also worth noting that I don't think New Vegas is the best thing since sliced bread either. Its western aesthetic, ironically enough, undermines the world building with quirky, anachronistic writing and tonal whiplash in the same vein of Fallout 2. In addition to this, the widespread belief that Bethesda ruined Fallout isn't quite true, as most have conveniently forgotten, or weren't even born yet, when Interplay was doing its best to crank out shovelware in an effort to stay afloat. There's a reason no one talks about Brotherhood of Steel. Finally, I would like to acknowledge that what we're about to go over is similar to 20 Sided's video on how Bethesda has misunderstood the IP. I do remember watching that video, although it's been a couple of years at least, but the general gist of it is the same. If we strip away the Pip Boys, the Vaults, 50s Americana, the Wacky Encounters, Super Mutants, and the Brotherhood of Steel, what is ultimately left over? Nothing. Because Bethesda has nothing to say. For starters, let's take a look at Fallout 4, the most recent entry in the mainline series. In the words of the game's lead writer, Emil Pagliarulo, the central theme is about suspicion. From this, we can extrapolate to broader lessons about human nature and society, such as obstacles, both real and imagined, keep people apart, or how technology can be misused. The problem, however, is that none of this holds up under the slightest bit of scrutiny. While you could point to the handful of one-off scripted encounters involving panic over since, the idea that suspicion is central to both the world and story rings a bit hollow when you, the player character, can join every single faction in the game without question, even becoming the leader of the Institute on little more than nepotistic whim. What about more broadly speaking? Well, ignoring the fact that Wastelanders will happily join any of your settlements to fulfill a mechanical purpose, even while you lead the Nuka World Raiders to the same territory you own. The game features nuclear power in all its endings. Fallout 4 concludes that, even in post-apocalyptic fiction, it's perfectly okay to use for political ends, but maybe that's just being disingenuous or unfair. After all, this is coming from the same guy who described the Dark Brotherhood questline in Oblivion as somehow biblical allegory. So how about the theme of family instead? The opening cinematic puts Nate's perspective front and center, with the inciting incident being Sean's kidnapping. Oh, and also that person you were married to getting a bullet to the brain, I guess. Once again, although the main story's predicated on familial bonds, it's a stretch that this theme is any more than superficial as the player is sidetracked by procedural errands and builds shacks for 20 hours. There's that dreaded L term again. As much as I hate how the term ludonarrative dissonance has been overused to the point of becoming meaningless, much like problematic or woke, it is applicable here because these are, indeed, video games. Fallout 4 attempts themes, but much like the rest of its god-awful writing, its actual focus is on visuals and, above all, marketability. 
If we go further back, we can see an even better example in Fallout 3. While, to the game's credit, the physical world space is Bethesda's best, it takes all the visual hallmarks of the Fallout series and throws it in a blender to try and please everyone. In doing so, it fails to commit to anything at all. There's the Enclave, FEV, Super Mutants, Vaults, Brotherhood of Steel, Gek, Dogmate, Leather Jackets, but what is it actually trying to say? The game loves to quote Revelation 21.6, which, sure, it sounds nice, but what does it have to do with the game? If we were being very generous, we could say that Fallout 3 uses water as a recurring visual motif, a metaphor to represent purity or life returning to the wasteland. The problem, once again, is that this doesn't come across in the story at all, especially when the player's busy recovering HP out of a 200-year-old toilet. Water, specifically clean drinking water, is definitely part of the premise of Fallout 3, but to argue that it's a legitimate theme, even on a symbolic level, is laughable. 3 does have its merits, but stands as a fan game at best, one that cannibalizes ideas that the series has already explored. At the very least, it tried to say something, somewhere, maybe, which is certainly more than can be said about Fallout 76. The Vault Boy, who'd once been used ironically as the symbol of pre-war America, has now become the detestable face of mindless consumerism and a multimedia empire. Something to genuinely embrace, like how many view the caricatures of Liberty Prime, Caesar's Legion, The Enclave, or NCR as some kind of moral bedrock. But that's a story for another day. Fallout's themes are comedic violence its religion power armor, its place of worship, the inventory screen. Modern Fallout has nothing to say because there is nothing to say. Its world is superfluous as canon and internal consistency changes, all in an effort to keep the player within the Skinner box. In that way, it perfectly encapsulates our age of content and the death of meaning. It must sound like I'm just looking to jerk off how great Fallout 1 is again. That Western civilization has been going downhill ever since, and Hannah Montana is actually linked to Triumph of the Will. The reality is that fatalism, much like nihilism, is bullshit, and I just want better writing, better stories, and a much higher standard of quality. Forget art, forget censorship, just say something and commit to it wholeheartedly. To tell you the truth, I don't care about Fallout anymore, and haven't paid much attention to it since around 2015. But, as with many things, I want others to come to love the stories and media they consume, like I once did. And saying that war never changes ad fucking nauseam ain't it.